In Christ Jesus, our suffering and crucified great high priest, your friends. There was only one man who could do it, and there was only one day on which it could be done. That day was the day of atonement, and that man was the high priest. And as the name suggests, the name of the day, the task at hand was atoning for the sins of the people. And so the high priest had all sorts of preparations to make. He had to go through cleansing and purification rituals and washings. He had to put on special ornate vestments for this day, a special inner garment, a special outer garment. Around his waist would be a special belt, and on top of his head was a special turban. And over it all was a breastplate with 12 precious jewels, signifying the 12 tribes of Israel. On the Day of Atonement, the high priest, before he could do the work of, of atoning for the sins of the people, first he had to atone for his own sins. And so a bull would be slaughtered for his own sins, and he would have to take the blood of that bull and take it into the most holy place and sprinkle it on the cover of the Ark of the Covenant. But before he could even do that, he had to first burn special incense that would fill the whole space with smoke. Because inside the most holy place, above that Ark of the Covenant, was the glory of God. And so the visibility of the glory of God, it, it had to be clouded, it had to be veiled, otherwise that high priest would die. So after he had burned that special incense and smoke filled the whole place, then he took that blood of the bull that was sacrificed for him and he sprinkled it on the cover of the Ark of the Covenant. And then he brought that blood and he sprinkled it on the altar for burnt offerings outside. And that would atone for his own sin. Then he could go about the work of atoning for the sins of the people. And to do that, he slaughtered one of two goats. And he took its blood into the most holy place and sprinkled its blood on the cover of the Ark of the Covenant and then after just about everything had been sprinkled with blood, there was one more thing to do. Over the other goat, the high priest would lay his hands and confess the sins of the people over that goat, and then that goat, yes, called the scapegoat, would be led out of the assembly, out of the presence of the people, into the wilderness, never to come back again. And through that, God was showing His people that their sin, their guilt had been removed from them. A substitute had to die for the sins of the high priest. A substitute had to die to atone for the sins of the people. And after all of that was done, the great day of atonement was done for a year. Because the next year, it had to happen again. And the year after that, and the year after that, high priest after high priest would do this again and again, year after year, generation after generation. The job was never fully done. There was never any finality to it. Why not? Because Hebrews chapter 10 tells us, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. The job was never done for the high priests of the Old Testament. And so a different high priest was needed, a high priest who would stand in magnificent contrast to all the Old Testament high priests who had come before him. And there is only one who could do it. And there is only one day on which it could be done. That great high priest is Jesus. And the day on which it was done 
we mark this day, Good Friday. And yes, like all the high priests that came before him, Jesus, the great high priest, he was truly and fully human, but he was over and above that because he was also truly and fully God and nothing less than that. And as truly and fully God, this great high priest, Jesus, was holy and blameless, undefiled. He didn't need purification. He didn't need cleansing. He didn't need atonement for himself. No, his task on that day, on Good Friday, was singular. Atoning for all sin of all people of all time. Atoning for your sin atoning for mine. And so according to God's direction, Jesus, our great high priest, was dressed up for the occasion, but not with ornate vestments like the great high priests of the Old Testament. No, Jesus was dressed up in a purple robe in mockery. On his head was not a turban, but a crown of thorns. And ultimately, he was stripped and his clothing was gambled for in front of him. He wore no, no breastplate with precious jewels on his chest. No, instead, adorning his heart was an immovable love, an immovable desire to see sinners, one and all, saved forever from their sin and from death. And so he goes, not into a tent, not into a tabernacle, not into a temple. He goes outside the city like a scapegoat, bearing a cross, bearing all sin of all people, of all time, Yours and mine. Jesus, the great high priest, doesn't offer somebody else's life as an atonement for sin. No, the great high priest is both the one who sacrifices and he himself is the sacrifice. You know, with all those priests of the Old Testament, if they did their job well and correctly and completely, the end result was that they did not die. But with Jesus, the great high priest, if he would carry out his duty and his job perfectly and completely, the end result would be he would die. And die he did. on a Friday afternoon for all people, for all sin, of all time, for you, for me, once for all. And so we gather today at the foot of the altar of Jesus' cross, where his blood is sprinkled as it pours from his veins. And what do we find there? Atonement. Cleansing from all sin. We find that the Lord Jesus has carried all of our sin, all of our failures, all of our shortcomings, all of our guilt. He bore it. He paid for it. So you don't have to. It's His. Not yours anymore. 
So what else is there for us to do but marvel? Marvel at our great high priest because as he hangs there on the cross, there is nothing for us to do except say, wow, God loves me that much. He has atoned for my sin in my great high priest, Jesus. A reading from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 26 through 28. This is certainly the kind of high priest we needed, one who is holy, innocent, pure, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices on a daily basis, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. In fact, he sacrificed for sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weaknesses, but the word of the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been brought to his goal forever. And we pray.